Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, a while back, a few years ago, I reviewed a Linux release called Skywave Linux. It was a uh, version of Ubuntu Linux that was put together to support uh, all, all things radio. Um, all the ham radio stuff you might want to play around with under Linux, all in one installation, ready to go. And it was quite good. I really enjoyed it. It uh, worked with uh, a lot of hardware and had a lot of the main software programs you'd use installed, pre-installed and ready to go. Well, uh, it's been quite a while since I've looked at it, and he just recently released Skywave Linux 4.0. Uh, July 6th of this year, so it's a brand new release. So I downloaded it, um, and then uh, I've set it up under uh, VirtualBox, and we'll look at that in just a second. This is the main web page uh, for Skywave Linux when you get here. Uh, you can download it with this direct download link right here. Um, there is a BitTorrent download, but I couldn't get that to work. Uh, the torrent client gave it a long hexadecimal file name and uh, just sat there uh, probably nobody seeding it yet because uh, it didn't seem to want to download um, so I had to go with the direct download it took quite a while out here my internet's kind of slow it took me about uh, six hours to download it <laughs> but we got it um, the main web page talks about it has a couple of videos showing it off and uh, showing some of the things that are in it uh, talks about the supported sdrs um, that it'll work with of course the uh, rtl sdr um, is supported um, various others uh, down here he mentions the uh, sdr play air spy blade rf um, he says uh, I thought he said something about drivers here. Well, he doesn't really. So it, apparently it looks like they're supported. So that's good. Uh, the key to getting most SDR devices and software to function in Linux is having proper drivers installed. Skywave broadly supports these with SOPI SDR and the GR Osmo SDR packages. Um, so I'm presuming that uh, that statement means that they are pre-installed. And uh, most of your SDR devices are going to work right off the bat. So that sounds good. Anyhow, I downloaded it. Um, I set it up under VirtualBox. And here it is running under VirtualBox, booted up to its desktop, which looks quite sparse. Uh, he's changed to a very simplified menu system and uh, status reporting system up here at the top. Now, by default under VirtualBox, it's opening at a fairly low resolution, and I cannot scale the display. I cannot scale the display because um, this is running off of a live CD image, and I would have to install the VirtualBox guest editions in order to um, uh, be able to scale the display. I thought, well, I'll just change the display settings in the program itself, or in the OS itself, but there's no normal common visible menu system. This little number one up here in the corner, that's where the menu is. And you can click on it all you want, nothing happens. You have to right click on it. And then this pop-up menu appears with uh, all the installed applications. And uh, I think I saw some configuration stuff in here. Uh, additional drivers down here would install hardware drivers. Not applicable as yet because we're running under VirtualBox. I really need to install this to the hard disk. I can't find an installer. Um, by default, there's no hard disk installer. What? Let's go back to the web page. We'll click on this main menu button up here. And, uh, oh, here we go, Skywave Linux hard drive installation. Okay, let's take a look at that, shall we? Conventional Linux installation. Da -da 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 -da. You have to install the installer. What? Yep, you have to install the installer. So uh, we've got a couple of commands here. sudo apt update, sudo apt install ubiquity, which is Ubuntu's installer. So apparently it's not there by default. Why? 
I don't know. Um, it would seem to me that the hard disk installer would be something you would definitely want in there by default. Uh, you know, um, it's convenient running it off of a CD, but in order to really extend it uh, and possibly install drivers for your hardware or your display or whatever, you really want to have it installed on a hard disk. And uh, he didn't include the installer. So we'll go over and we'll install Ubiquity and install it to VirtualBox's hard drive so I can get all the everything sorted out and get it running for for real and then we'll uh, we'll look a little closer at it. Boy, this thing is just not friendly to VirtualBox. Now, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of us will use VirtualBox to examine and test out uh, various operating systems without having to uh, screw around with our main computer or risk uh, damaging our hard disk or changing things inadvertently. Uh, so, this thing is not friendly uh, to running in VirtualBox. Uh, as I mentioned, the screen resolution is low by default. You can't change that without installing the VirtualBox guest editions. Since we're running off a live ISO, that might be a temporary thing. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. I'm not having much luck around <laughs> other things. But uh, um, to open a terminal, you have to right-click on this little one, and this brings up this menu. And one thing I've noticed is that this menu seems to resort. Um, Mate Terminal, which is over here, was over here. So things are changing their positions in here. Um, that annoys me, being a little bit OCD, because I'm used to things being physically in a certain spot. Now, uh, I opened a terminal, and I did an apt update. And that took a while, but when it finished, I couldn't see the prompt because it was off the screen. Uh, it's opening windows bigger than the displayable resolution, and things end up off the screen, and you end up stuck where you can't get to the close buttons and things. So I did manage to type uh, exit and get the terminal to close, and I was going to reopen it so I could see the screen again to do the install of Ubiquity. But now, if I open a terminal, the screen just goes gray. Uh, no prompt. I can't, I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I think it's running a terminal. Let me just type exit. Yeah, it's running a terminal. We just can't see the text, probably because it's way over here off the displayable screen. So let's, uh, let's do this again. Yeah, there it is. Okay, now I can see the border. See that? So our terminal is off the screen, and there's no way to get up to the top to see the text, to type anything in. Oh gosh, this is really annoying. I'll have to do it blind. Sudo apt install ubiquity. Okay, it's going to do it. Oh my gosh, it's going to install a lot of stuff. But not being able to see the prompt is kind of annoying here. All right, yes. Okay, I'll let this run and see if we can get Ubiquity installed and get the installer going so I can install it to my VirtualBox hard drive, install guest edition so I can get a proper screen, and then we can finally look at it. So, uh, yeah, his live CD is not VirtualBox friendly. Note that. It's uh, kind of a pain. I could put it on a USB stick and boot my computer off of it, but uh, I'm not going to try to install it onto my laptop because it's my primary work computer and I can't risk screwing it up. Um, that would be crippling for me. So, so yeah, problematic with VirtualBox. Uh, looks like you have to do parts of the uh, install of the installer blind, which I would think that the hard disk installer should be there by default. I can't stress that enough. I don't know why. He did not include it. That just seems kind of like a bonehead move to me, but you know, that's just me. All right, we'll be back once I finally get this installed to the hard disk. Coming back to uh, the web here, while I've got the Ubiquity installer running, which is going to take a while, I have a slow internet. As you can see, we're running at about, uh, oh, anywhere from 2K per second to uh, 18 to 20K per second, so slow internet out here. Um, as I mentioned, the installer is not in, the installer for the hard disk is not installed by default. You have to install it. Wacky. Scrolling down further, 
looking at other installation instructions here. He's got stuff on how to create the ISO file, um, uh, a way to modify your Grub configuration to uh, allow booting Skywave or your hard disk on boot. Again, more work than you should probably need to do. Uh, how to install it on Windows machines. Uh, da, 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 da. Making a dedicated USB stick. Yeah, here we go. Persistence. How to keep your changes. Okay, this caught my eye. Because if you're booting off of a live uh, USB or CD, you might want to keep changes that you make um, to the OS uh, for the next boot. And... Uh, Oh, it starts out pretty nice. There is no need to lose files you create or changes you make while operating your system from an ISO file! Exclamation point. He's excited to tell us that. Great! Uh, configure the system to boot with persistence enabled. In the persistence mode, new data settings are written to a dedicated partition. A dedicated partition? What? So you would want me to create a separate partition on my hard disk in order to save persistent changes. That would be a bit of work in a lot of cases. In most cases your hard drive is going to be fully partitioned and you would have to resize an existing partition in order to create a dedicated partition. So, uh, yuck. But uh, I guess you could do it. <laughs> oh man. A dedicated partition of at least 128 megabytes and additional boot parameter. Uh, so, yeah, you'd have to uh, modify your system a bit in order to create a dedicated partition in order to save changes if you're booting it off of the live CD. Um, I suppose you could... Uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah, you could. Persistence can be added to an existing USB stick or SD card by creating a new partition and setting the label to Casper-RW. Okay, so you could create that dedicated partition on the USB stick itself. All right, that's better. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so yeah, that's uh, interesting. And of course, at the end here, he says he wishes us good luck. <laughs> I usually only tell somebody good luck if they're um, facing a daunting task. So yeah, again, not really endearing me to this live CD. Um, it looks like uh, it's definitely not something for the casual or inexperienced Linux user uh, unless they're willing to take a little time and do some reading and learn a few things. So, yeah, that's just a note I wanted to add in. While I'm waiting on Ubiquity to install over here, and I've got 15 minutes... No, actually, two hours and 12 minutes to wait while uh, Ubiquity installs on this slow internet connection. Okay, so yeah, the next clip, I'll, uh, I'll get this thing installed to the VirtualBox hard drive, even if it takes me all day, and then uh, we'll take a look at the contents of the new Skywave Linux. Well, golly gee willikers, look at this. So yeah, the uh, Ubiquity installer finally finished, and I went ahead and ran it, and oh, oh, oh. Installer crashed! We're sorry, the installer crashed. Please file a bug report using the command Ubuntu Bug Ubiquity in a terminal. This will gather information about your system and your installed process. And, da -da 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 and then a trace back that shows us the actual error. Errors. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, index error. List index out of range. <laughs> Uh, error. Oh, thank you. You know, I kind of like this terminal, um, from what I can see of it, in a way. Uh, the, the way the prompt updates to give you a status is kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm uh, at a bit of an impasse here. Uh, I'm kind of stuck. You know, if I can't run a live CD in VirtualBox to uh, examine it and test it out, uh, generally, I pass on it. And in the case of Skywave Linux 4, there's other videos out there looking at it in depth. Uh, so, you know, I would just be redundant anyway. I was going to look at the ease of use and installation and just tech check out a few of the soft pieces of software with my AirSpy. But if I can't get it installed into VirtualBox, um, 
I'm not going to go any further. You know, some of you are going to be upset with me about that, but like I say, there's other videos out there looking at it more in depth. Um, easy to find with a quick search. So if you really want to see what it's all about, uh, others have done that. I'm going to say at this point, it's just not a friendly live ISO. If you can't run it in VirtualBox, um, yeah. But that's just me, just my opinion. But, you know, this is problematic. I mean, this this screen resolution uh, dependency, I would call it. Uh, because, you know, if, if your OS is going to be dependent on a larger screen resolution and not dynamically resize things to fit the screen, that's bad behavior. Um, for example... Let's open the file browser. Okay, it moved again. Uh, it's over here. Kaja file browser. Okay, I'm going to open that. See the problem? <sighs> the entire screen is now occupied with the central 80% or so of the file browser's window. It did not open to the default screen dimensions. It opened beyond them. That's bad behavior. Um, that's probably the desktop that he's using that's doing that. There's no way to resize this. There's no way to get to the open and close buttons on the window. Uh, at this point, you would look like you're completely stuck uh, because there's no way to even get to the menu to open a terminal. You'd have to power off the, the machine. Um, that's, that's just terrible behavior. I do have a way. Uh, I can click on a folder. The file browser has this open uh, in terminal. Where is it? Open in terminal which will open a terminal with that directory. So that gives us the option to get into a terminal, which we're now in, but since it is larger than the screen, the prompt is way over here off the displayable area, but I know that I can type things. So I can type uh, shutdown. And apparently it didn't work. But our prompt came over, so we can read it. Hey, that's cool. Maybe we can see what the error is. Okay. Oh, it's scheduled it. That's right. I want to, I need to do it. Uh, minus H uh, now. There we go. Okay. So I could still safely shut it down. But uh, I can't get it installed to the VirtualBox hard drive. The installer crashed. Um, I think this needs more work. Uh, I think this should be considered uh, an alpha release and buggy. Hopefully the creator sees this video and uh, makes some adjustments. I'll keep an eye out for that. I might try to email him and ask him about this uh, because for me, that's that's a, a deal breaker. If it won't install in VirtualBox and you can't use it in VirtualBox to explore it without touching your computer, then um, that's a deal breaker for me. So sorry guys for not really giving you a good look at Skywave yet. Um, I'm going to communicate with the author and see if he can make some adjustments or changes or get this thing so it'll work in VirtualBox. And then we'll take a closer look at it. I don't have a spare computer to install it on, um, to try it out on, and I'm not going to mess with the partition map or try to install it to my laptop because that's my work computer and I just can't risk it. So, yeah, we'll consider this a bug report video for the creator of Skywave Linux, and uh, we'll see what he says, if I can email him and, and find out what can be done to uh, get it working under VirtualBox. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.